lead up to Ireland's Six Nations rugby match with England in 2009, Irish player Brian O'Driscoll said this, Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. Mastering your craft is not simply a case of learning new things. You need to actually learn things from different perspectives and then build up a picture of how they work together to really understand a concept. And this is why I always try to tell people on this channel to learn more than one way to solve a problem. Take this algorithm problem, for example. Given an array of objects where each object contains a name and a score, write a TypeScript function that returns a new array each element in the new array should be a string formatted as name and then score, where name and score are the corresponding values from each object in the input array. Now, off the top of the head, I can think of at least two ways to solve this, probably three ways we can solve this. Here's a couple of solutions in TypeScript. We have a person type that's defined at the top here, and we need to map an array of these objects into an array of strings. So what we could do is we could create a new function, format array with a loop, Take the input array, which is an array of person objects. And then let's just say we've got a formatted array, which is the output object. And we'll loop through using a for statement, let i, i is less than input array dot length, and then i plus plus. And for each one of those, we'll push in a result into that formatted array. And looking back at the problem, we want the result to be a string that says name, and then the item dot name, score, the item dot score. Then we just return that formatted array. There we go, that's one way of solving the problem. It's fairly self-explanatory. It's probably one of the first ways that a lot of people would jump towards. But it's not the only way to solve this. Let's think of another way we can solve this that takes advantage of um, map in JavaScript. Now I've got a separate video up here about map and map and reduce in JavaScript. But let's just see if we can use map to solve this in a different way. So I'll create another version of this, function format array with map. I'm gonna take in the input array again. And this time I'm gonna return the input array dot map, and then I'm going to map person to name, person dot name, score, person dot score. So there you go. That does the same thing, but without the extra variable and without the for loop. Lastly, we could even try a third way. Let's try it with a generator function, format array with generator. So we're taking that input array, and this time we're going to loop through it with a for loop, person of input array, and we're going to use the yield statement and we're gonna yield each an item in the array. And so we can loop through this and we can basically turn the format array with generator into an array. There you go, so three different ways that look totally different, but they all do the same thing. Now we can sit here and argue all day about which of these is better. And believe me, people do argue about this kind of stuff quite a lot on the internet, but ultimately that's missing the point. All three of these are correct solutions. And if you want to be a wise developer instead of just a knowledgeable one, you should learn all three of these approaches. Learn about map reduce, learn about generators, and of course, learn about for loops. The only way that you're going to be able to make a wise and informed decision is by seeing a problem for all these different angles, weighing up all the different ways of doing it, discussing it with your team, and then picking a solution. But if you only know one of these, then you're only gonna have a narrow view of what the solution could be. And this concept of learning from multiple angles isn't just about solving coding problems, it permeates every aspect of your career in software development. So consider debugging. You'll often come across bugs that seem impossible to fix at first, but if you approach these bugs from different angles, so maybe you could start with unit tests and then use logging and then attach a debugger, or even get somebody else involved and do pair programming. By doing all these different things, you might discover the solution a lot more quickly, as opposed to just having one method that you approach every problem with. Each method gives you a new perspective and a different set of information about the problem. Also, think about the different programming paradigms. So there's procedural programming, object-oriented programming, functional programming, all that sort of stuff. Each of these has its strengths and its weaknesses. And by understanding and applying them, you can choose the most effective approach for each project. For instance, functional programming might be more suitable for a data-heavy application, whereas object-oriented programming might be better for applications with really complex relationships between objects. And in today's world, understanding the basics of cloud computing and DevOps and even data science can be incredibly beneficial as well. These fields intersect with software development more and more each day. So learning about all this kind of stuff can open up new career opportunities and new ways to contribute to projects. So you see, being a well-rounded developer isn't just about mastering different programming languages or technologies. It's about understanding and embracing different methods and being able to assess them all in a wider context. 
So by looking at problems from various angles, like we've done in this code example here, not only do you become a more proficient problem solver, but you also become a more valuable team member and a more adaptable and resilient professional in the ever-changing world that we live in with technology. So keep learning, keep exploring, and remember, every new perspective and every new way that you learn to solve a problem is an opportunity for you to grow and it's an opportunity for you to learn. So why not check out this video on my channel next about how to further your career in software development. Until next time, my name's James and this is the Train to Code YouTube channel.